Hi there, your computer friend Connie here. Let's talk about OneNote and why you can use it personally for something like a cookbook or to gather all your recipes. Well, the reason I wanted to start here with an example within OneNote that's a personal example is because this is kind of where I started with my OneNote explosion, really. Um, I was on my way home from uh, work one day and I knew I had company coming that weekend and I was thinking, oh, I wanna make this four cheese spinach dip. So I thinking of stopping by the grocery store to get stuff, but I had no idea what to get. Uh, and I Googled it and couldn't find it. So it's so like, okay, I have to go all the way home, find that recipe and then come back to the grocery store. What a waste of time, right? And so what happened is I decided, okay, never again, all my favorite recipes that I like, I really need to start organizing and I, they should be in my one note. And so that when I feel the urge to make something special on my way home from, from work one day, I can easily go pick up those ingredients because I can just look them up in my OneNote on my phone. That's the real cool thing, right? So let's just show you around a little bit of what I'm talking about. So here's the Kelsey's Four Cheese Spinach Dip. It was just a page that I had actually copied from a neighbor actually who had made that one day. And I'm like, oh, I love that. Let me give me the recipe and just took a copy of it the way most people probably do, just taking a picture of it. But then where do you keep that picture? Finding it in my pictures would take me all day because that was years ago that I got this recipe. So having it in my notebook is way faster to find it. Um, so just quick little tip, if you are gonna put a picture like this in your notebook, then just maybe make a title. As you can see, I have a title here on it um, so that that becomes something that's easily searchable when I use my search in my OneNote. Now let's talk a little bit more about this. Um, so stacks of recipes uh, are made easier is what my next part of this revolves around. It's just a convenience. So um, I can take pictures of the recipes I already have. And let's face it, with me uh, being the age I am, I have all kinds of different recipes in all kinds of different forms. I have recipe cards, I have handwritten recipes, I have stuff that was emailed to me, pictures I've taken of recipes. And uh, of course I have some some new cookbooks, some old tattered cookbooks that have been handed down. And I wanted to grab all the things that are my favorites from these things. So handwritten recipes, here's a quick little pic picture of one of the ones. Uh, this is from my mother-in-law. My husband loves this recipe. And uh, so my daughter had the pleasure of handwriting it for him when we were at his mother's place one day. And, uh, and now we have it uh, in here so we can find it fast rather than looking for that piece of paper amongst a stack of other papers that we have recipes on, right? And then speaking of stacks of papers, I do have, uh, back when I got married many, many years ago, I, I received a recipe card box with a few recipes in it from some of my friends. And, uh, you know, I, I still actually use some of those recipes to this day. There's a lot of stuff in that box that I probably don't use. So I've now taken pictures of the cards that I use the most and I can have a hard time finding. And here's an example of one with some extra love on it in terms of uh, the actual recipe <laughs> ingredients on the card. So I can see them, uh, uh, see that it's well used and then the other thing i find myself doing is that i have these cookbooks i have a few of them i've i've certainly over the years purged the ones that i don't use as often but i still have quite a pile and of those cookbooks i only use a few pages out of them for the recipes that i like the most but which cookbook is it in that's my favorite recipe of that thing so now i've taken those pages and uh, again i have that in my cookbook you saw the kelsey's one uh, that actually isn't from a cookbook that's more from a neighbor but uh, the pages I want to show you was this one's from a cookbook uh, that I have taken you know examples from and then you might be thinking well you know Connie I don't really need your idea of making recipes in my OneNote because I've got Google I can just Google anything yeah I, I know Google googling is great but the trouble is you know if we googled something and, and this happened to us my daughter actually wanted to make gingerbread cookies one year and um, she googled this recipe and it was fantastic it was just like the best gingerbread we've ever had and then she wanted to repeat that months and months later and it wasn't the same recipe and it wasn't as great so um, uh, we decided at that point okay once we once we find a recipe that we like i mean yeah you bookmark all you want but still you you then are cluttering up another area that may be still hard to find so we want to capture the recipes that we've googled that we really like and even make our own extra notes on them so that we can see which what we've tried and what we like um, from those websites that we've found those great recipes on and by the way it'll also reference the recipe the recipe website when we when we do it this way so i'm just going 
going to click on the example here that I have in my OneNote. I have a lot of ones that I've Googled. And so this is an example of a recipe that I've Googled. I'm just going to the top of it. So you can see there's the website right there. And I've done this. The yellow stuff you see here is what I've done. So I've highlighted some things. I've also put the blue on here so things can stick out a little bit more and be easier to read for me. I've even put some bullets and stuff, but you don't have to do that. You can just grab the recipe right from the website and it'll just put it in to your OneNote as a recipe. And I the picture kind of was above it, so I just moved it off to the side so that I didn't have it uh, taking up the space, but it still could motivate me to, to make that uh, recipe, right? So so that's kind of cool. So any anything that you want um, to Google um, and you find that, hey, no, this is worthwhile keeping, put it in your OneNote. There's another example of one, uh, chicken parmesan. I think a lot of these are Googled ones. Here's an example of one as well. And that one's a little bit different in terms of how I captured it. Um, so I have the website there and I have a picture of what the website looks like, but I didn't capture the page like I did in the previous one. So there's different ways of capturing the information from the website. So now you should be noticing by watching me move around here that, um, you know, adding your your, your recipes into OneNote can be something that helps you in organization, uh, at least helps you find things a little faster, perhaps, or those favorite things a little faster. But organization is easy because with OneNote, you're picking your organization, you're designing it. You're not having to live by the way the cookbook set it up or the way that was that recipe was thrown back in the folder or back in the recipe um, cupboard or whatever, right? So you now can take charge of how it's organized. So if you notice from my screen here, I have my recipes organized on the left here in different kinds of sections. So those are some breakfast things appetizer things, salads, meals, you know, I even have some groupings there, All right? So lots of organization available to you. Okay. And, and my example, I don't have, uh, so uh, and within the pages, these are different recipes, but you could do it however you want. You know, I've done it. Um, so go back to, so these ones are separate recipes in each of these pages. But if I go back to my appetizer example where I have dips, I don't have one recipe on there. I have a number of examples of different dips. And these are from uh, the cookbook that I was telling you earlier that I took pictures from. So organization is up to you. And so in this example of the appetizers, I've got the hot appies versus the cold appies. And those are little groups that I've created so I can find those faster. If you want to alphabetize everything, you can. If you want to put your favorite recipes at the top and your least favorite at the bottom, you can. If you can, you want to put extra information about the calories and how good it is for you, then you can put that too. So lots of extra stuff, detail that you can put in here as well. In fact, you could or organize this based on health or based on calories or based on whatever method that you want to base it on. So as a bonus of doing this, um, you have more room in your kitchen cupboards or in your kitchen. So this is this is my goal. This is my kitchen cupboard full of recipe books that I want to clear out one day. I'm not showing you the other. Um, I have a recipe holder that has a bunch of loose recipe papers in it that I'm trying to eventually get put into this system as well. So you're not seeing that picture here, but I want to get rid of this cupboard so I can have it back and use it for something else within my kitchen. So that'll be a bonus, right? And then the other part part is we can make this more than just for the recipes. We can make this like a memory book. So think about, you know, I, I know one of my friends was telling me that she received a recipe book um, handed down to her from her grandma or somebody in her family, I think. And it was very special and, and, and for sure that that makes sense. But if you want to keep it long term and maybe hand it down to people, um, other generations, then this might be a way to go with it. Make it more digital. So you take pictures of the whole thing if you want and put it in digital form in a one note notebook but go beyond the pictures so here's an example of uh, a recipe that our family loves and what I did here is I had pictures of my daughter that's her there and a couple of her friends making that recipe and then a picture of it made and uh, of us plating it as well so this is pavlova one of our favorite desserts that uh, we we grew to love because a friend brought it for uh, because a friend brought it to a function and uh, yeah, after that we're like, okay, we gotta make that. 
So, you know, we, I could have put a feed video on here. I can put as much other detail as I want. So this is your recipe book. Make it your own, add some fun to it. And in fact, I could share this whole recipe book with my sister or my husband or my family or whomever. So you could have recipe books for other people or other groups of people that everybody contributes to and puts pictures and stuff in. Wouldn't that be fun? You know, a little bit more fun than the, the recipe cover that I showed you a picture of uh, earlier, right? You know, some other ideas is if you're doing a video, then, um, you know, you could do a video of if you're going to hand this down to people or, or, or share this with other people, then wouldn't it be cool to do a video of you making something? So you're actually teaching that person how to make those really good cookies or how to make that difficult dessert or meal. Right. Um, and then and, and that's a video of you so that they, they see you from years, years from now, as well as um, they're learning something. So. So there's a, some, there are some ideas, hopefully, to inspire you to use OneNote for more than just work. Uh, make it fun, make it interesting, and make it help you work smarter at home and at work. By the way, I should mention that recently I just released uh, my book on OneNote. It was published by a publisher by the name of Pact, and I'm so excited for what it can offer to anybody that picks it up in terms of knowledge on how to use OneNote and all kinds of ideas on where to use it and lots of inspiration and motivation on why to use it. So please pick up a copy of it, take a look at it on my website or check the link below so you can see it on Amazon and you can read some reviews as well. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye.